So we all know that famous story of Philip Glass having to drive his taxi around even during the week of his big premiere of Einstein on the Beach at the Metropolitan Opera in 1976. Well, I'm here to tell you that Philip Glass, even though he doesn't take the taxi anymore, he does ride the subway just like all the other New Yorkers do. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a story of how I met Philip Glass for the first and probably last time in the flesh on a New York City subway. So here we go. So a few months before the New York City lockdown set in, my fiance and I decided to trek all the way from Manhattan to Brooklyn on the New York City subway, just like all New Yorkers would do. And I decided to have my suit fitted over at a shop over there called Bindle and Keep. So after we finish up from the shop, we decided to get back to Manhattan, where we came from, on a different subway line, this one called the J train. So we get on the platform and everything seems normal. And to my right, I'm looking and I see this older gentleman just on his own waiting for the train, just like everybody else. And usually, you know, I wouldn't think too much of this, but I went over to my fiance and said, you know what, I think that I know who this person is. I've never met this person in my life, but I recognize his face. I just don't know where from. So I start looking through my phone on Google and trying to see who I think this person is. And the first thought that came to my mind was, well, this is the composer Philip Glass. I look at this man and I thought, there's no way that Philip Glass is actually taking the train with all of us, no less during rush hour when there's so many people around. So my fiance was telling me, well, why don't we follow him into his car? At that time, we were just one car ahead. So all we had to do was just mosey on over there and just follow him into, into his car and see what would happen after that. So we ended up doing that. I was a little bit reluctant to go and follow him in, but my fiance just basically pushed me into the car and said, okay, let's go. Let's go and see what happens, you know? So now at this point, we're in the car with this older gentleman. He's seated down at the bench and we're standing next to the pole and the train is moving to the next stop. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know who this is. Um, what if he gets off at the next stop? I will never know. So my fiance was saying to me, well, just go up to him and ask him, just ask him. And at that very moment, this older gentleman starts looking up and stares straight into my eyes for I have to say probably a good half second. And at that moment, two things happened to me. Number one, I was scared to death. And number two, I knew it was Philip Glass. So I went over there on my own, just straight ahead. And he was looking down at the floor with two other people scrunched up right beside him. And I just kind of tap him gently on the shoulder. And I say, excuse me, are you Philip Glass? And he looks right at me, starts laughing. And he says, well, yes, I am. And at this point, I was wondering to myself, well, did I just make a big mistake here? Because the last thing you want is that your heroes are kind of, you know, not very nice in person or, you know, they're not exactly what you expected them to be when you finally meet them. But I have to say uh, he was beyond beyond nice when he began talking to me. I mean, he didn't have to, but I guess he was sitting there and he was kind of had nowhere else to be anyway, right? So after he said, yes, I'm Philip Glass, I didn't really think of what the next thing I would say is. I was just hoping maybe he would say, no, I don't know who that is and I would move on with my day. But no, he said, yes, he is. So I had to think on the fly, okay, what am I gonna say now? So the first thing out of my mouth is, well, I teach your piece called one plus one in my music humanities class over at Columbia University. And he just started laughing and laughing and laughing. He said, oh, why are you teaching that piece? That piece is so, so old. I said, yeah, it's old, but it's a classic, you know? And it's a really, uh, you know, easy piece to teach to uh, students that know nothing about music. So that was a very nice exchange. Obviously, he um, asked me if I was a composer myself. And of course, you know, I said yes for now. <laughs> and he laughed at that. So that was our little exchange. And then I had my fiance come over and he shook his hand and had all those, you know, pleasantries. And then I just left him alone after that. And uh, we got off the train. So it was just an amazing experience to actually get to meet Philip Glass and meet him in a very like New York kind of way instead of seeing him at a concert where he probably would be flooded by people backstage. You know, I saw him on a subway station where no one knew who the heck he was that was sitting right next to him on the station. So anyway, that's my uh, 
interesting little nugget for you. My story about meeting Philip Glass on the New York subway, probably the most classic way uh, you could meet him unless you were one of those people that uh, rode with him in the New York taxi back before the 1970s, which would have been an interesting experience too. So anyway, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please leave a like on the video. That would be really great for other people to see uh, this little story too. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to this channel where I'll give you some more tutorials about what life is like as a composer, as well as some business tips and whatnot in that kind of regard. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.